Hi, this is Keith from BluffTitler.us, and I wanted to take just a few minutes to show you some of the cool things that you can do to create animated 3D real-time titles using BluffTitler. When we first open BluffTitler, you'll see two windows. This window up here is the preview window that shows us uh, everything that's going on in our show. The bottom window is the tools window where I can control all of the parameters that relate to my Bluff Titler show. So let's create a very simple animated title and to get started we'll select File, New Show. And now Bluff Titler creates the default show for me which has just one text layer. Everything in Bluff Titler is called a layer and a camera and a couple of lights. Let's take a closer look at the text layer that's been created for me, and I'm going to show you some of the basic parameters that you can change to create cool titles. First, we might want to change what the title says. So I can go to my text box over here, and instead of the default text, I can type something like, My First Title. And you'll see that as I'm typing, Bluff Titler automatically updates the preview window to show me what I'm doing. One of the coolest things about Bluff Titler is most objects are actually 3D. Let's select the text position parameter, and you'll note that I can move the text by either adjusting the sliders here to change the X, Y, and Z position of my text, or I can just click and drag inside the window. If I hold down the left mouse button, I'm moving in the X and Y directions, and if I hold down the right mouse button, I can zoom in and out and control the Z depth. Of course, I can also change the rotation of my text, so let's select the text rotation parameter, and again, by dragging in the preview window, I can move the text, and now we can really see that this is a 3D object. I can adjust the scale of my text, for example. So let's go in here to uh, text scale, and you'll see that I can make it deep or shallow. If I want to select a value that the slider doesn't let me reach, I can actually type a value directly into the text box here. So let's say I want some extremely deep text. I could just type 10 in there, and now you'll see that my text is very, very deep. Let's go back to a more sensible depth, though. The next thing I want to show you is that you can change how the edges of your text is presented, and that's done with the bevel parameter. If you go to the bevel menu, you'll see that there are a lot of different bevel styles you can select. Anything from flat, that is, it's no longer 3D, to a straight bevel, the default round bevel, or various special effects like sequined text, or tubular text, or a wireframe view. I think I'm going to go with a straight bevel for now. We can also change the appearance of the bevel using the bevel parameter. So let's take a look at that. Go to the bevel parameter, and now I've got a new set of sliders that I can use, and I can change the amount of beveling on my text, and I can also change its depth. That looks pretty good right there. If I want to get my text back in its default state, I can reset the rotation and the position. And now, of course, you can use almost any TrueType font that's installed on your system for your uh, titles in Bluff Titler. And you can change the font by either going up here to the Media menu and selecting Change Font, or by clicking the Change Font button in the Tool window. And you'll see that I get a preview of all the fonts in my system, and I can select something different. Let's select this font, and you'll see the Bluff Titler updates to show me. That looks a little more cool. Now, the next thing I can do is let's change the color of the text. There's a color parameter, and each of the three sliders represent the red, green, and blue values for my text. So I can go in and just select a cool color, or if I hit F3, I can actually display the Windows Standard Color Picker. I can go in here and let's select a nice purple color for our text. I can also do things like change the uh, apparent shininess of the text using the specularity parameter, and I can go from completely dull to very, very shiny. We can also adjust all sorts of things, like the kerning and the spacing between characters. You'll see in this uh, font, my letters look a little far apart, so I'm going to go in and select the spacing parameter, and I'm actually going to move the letters closer together. There we go. And if I'm not happy with my font, I can actually just go in and change it. And it'll still keep all of the other parameters that I set. I'm going to select a slightly different font. That one's better. Now, it's great that we can select all these parameters and change the look of our text, but let's get to the animation. Now, let's say we want to make a title where this 
text actually flies in and then lands in this position on the screen. Bluff Titler uses a uh, keyframe based animation system, which means that we set keyframes along the timeline down here. And this timeline slider lets me control what time each keyframe is at. And after I set different keyframes, Bluff Titler will automatically interpolate between them or create all the in between frames for me automatically. So let's go to the end of our show by moving the timeline all the way to the right, and I'm just going to hit the record button to set a keyframe. And now I'm going to rewind to the beginning of my show and set the initial position of my text. This will all make sense in just a second. Let's go in and change the text position parameter so that my text is actually behind the camera. Now, when I hit the play button, what's going to happen is the text is going to smoothly move from the first position to the second position. So I'll rewind, hit play, and there's my animated title. Of course, we can do other kinds of animations, like animate the uh, rotation of the text. Let's have it flip around 360 degrees. And you'll see that it flies in, flips around, and stops. One really cool feature of Bluff Titler is I can control how the animation happens. So, by default, we have a constant speed animation where I smoothly move between each keyframe, but I can actually select all sorts of different special effects, like the bouncer effect. And now when I click play, you'll see that my text bounces into place. Similarly, I can do things like a decelerate move, where it slows down over time, or something like uh, outside, where it sort of overshoots each keyframe. Let's go back to our constant speed animation style. So this animation is pretty cool, but it's not long enough for me. By default, Bluff Titler creates a three second animation, but of course you can change that. Go to the file menu and select set show duration. And now you can select the duration in seconds for your title. Let's say you want to double it. So I'm going to go to six seconds and I can either stretch the existing clip or, or stretch the existing show Let's go to six seconds, and I can either stretch the existing show, or I can extend it by another three seconds. I'm going to select stretch, and now you'll see when I replay this show that it's a lot longer. And there's my text zooming into the screen. All right. Now another cool thing with Bluff Titler is that your uh, bevels can actually have uh, different materials than the body of the text. So let's add a... Um, silvery border to this text. I can do that by clicking this button, which is Attach Border to Current Layer. So I'm going to click that, and I'll get my preset menu, and this shows me a bunch of different uh, presets that are included with Bluff Titler, and I'm going to select the uh, Silver Straight Border preset, click OK, and now you'll see on the edges of my text I have a shining silver border. Let me rotate the text to make this more obvious. So you see now I've got a shiny border. What Bluff Titler has done is it's created a new layer for me, here layer 5, and you can see the parentheses uh, tell us that it's a child of layer 4, which is the original text. And of course I could go in and I could change uh, all sorts of parameters here, um, select different effects for the shining border, change its color, uh, etc. If I'm not happy with the uh, preset I selected, I can go to Preset and load preset, and I could select something different. So, for example, the uh, punk border. Let's undo that change. Of course, I can always go back to my original text layer and change parameters there without affecting the border. So if I want to go and change the color of the inside of the text, I can do that by adjusting the sliders, and you'll see that only the interior portion of the text changes. Let's go with a nice blue color. So the inside of my text is this shiny blue color, and the outside is this reflective border, and this brings us to the subject of effects. You can create all sorts of different texture effects for your objects in Bluff Titler using the Change Effect parameter. So if I click the Change Effect button, I can select all sorts of different effects. Let's take a look at just a few of them. Now, uh, one of the things that we can do is add a bump map. So the bump map effect we select Open, and you'll see that now, I'm going to move my timeline here, this text has a simulated texture on it, 
and you'll see that it's bumpy. And the specular highlights now highlight each of the little bumps. If we wanted to change that texture a little bit, we could actually go in and select Media, Change Effect, and now I get the uh, Change Textures and Effect dialog. And what I can do is I could select a different picture to be used as the bump map on the text. So let's go into my Textures menu, and I've created a whole bunch of different bump maps that I can use with my text. You can use um, Photoshop to create these or uh, anything that handles normal maps. Things like uh, Genetica is a great program for creating seamless textures with uh, normal maps. Here's one that I created that sort of looks like an alien goo. And now, as we move the slider, you'll see that we have a completely different texture connected to our text. pretty cool. Some effects actually have multiple textures, and let's take a look at a multi-texture effect where there's a color map and a bump map. So I select this texture under the multi-textures folder called color map bump map, and now if I go to media change effect, you can see that there are actually two settings here. In this texture, the first texture is used for the color map, and the second texture is used for the bump map. So let's go in and select a different picture. And we're going to use this alien growth color map for the color and then I'm going to use where is it? Alien growth normal map for the bumps. Now when I click OK you'll see that if we zoom in on the text here we've got different colors and different textures and they're synced up because I created these to go together. If I go in here and hit reset on my uh, the, the text color, which overrides the texture map, you can see 